scale and perspective what it means to a buyer and seller in Hoboken and Jersey City. This week on The Brian Murray Show. I'm Brian Murray and welcome to The Brian Murray Show, a real estate show, New Jersey style. Today's discussion point is about scale and perspective. Now I just read that the Biltmore is the largest home in the U.S. The one down in North Carolina, I've never been, it's on my bucket list to go to. Might as well, it's the largest home, I sell homes. But even before I found that out, I still wanted to go there because I thought it was cool. But for scale and perspective, I also found out that Buckingham Palace is bigger than the Biltmore by four times when you're talking about square footage, four times as much. So even though you might think something is big, maybe it isn't as big as you think. And what does that mean to a buyer and a seller? Because we're not buying the Biltmore and Buckingham Palace is not for sale. But what it means is everybody gets caught up in, I need a certain square footage. Certainly I need some bedrooms. I need one bedroom, two bedroom, three bedroom, four bedroom, more bedroom. But sometimes you get caught up in the square footage. It's like, hey, I really need 1,300, I need 1,400, I need 1,600, I need 2,000 square feet. It really depends on how that square footage is laid out, especially in some of these urban homes. Long hallways, I know 1,400 square foot homes where they have long hallways, eats up 150 square feet of the home. I know 1,200 square foot homes with no dead space and they feel about the same. You know why? Because they really are about the same. Yet you're paying a much higher cost because you're paying by the square foot for that home with the 14, 1500 square foot versus the one with the 1200 square feet. So sometimes that perspective is important. The other thing is closet space. It is square footage, but a lot of times, especially in a lot of the new construction, even the homes built in the last 20 years, they, they really cut out a lot of the storage or closet space to make the living rooms much bigger, the bedrooms, much, the livable, viewable space, the stuff that people pay for. And when a buyer comes into a home, they don't realize, hey, I might not have as much storage as I'd like. The good news is that there's CubeSmart right down the street and it's cheap than having space in your house. That closet space in your house, if you bought a home at 800 a square foot, guess what? That's 800 a square foot you're paying for the closet space. Plus taxes, plus HOA. Cube smart, you're looking at, oh, hey, I'm paying 20 bucks a month per square foot. Actually, I'm paying a dollar a month per square foot, $2 a month per square foot. So think about that over the course of a year, $25 per square foot. Over the course of 10 years, $250 per square foot. No HOA, no taxes. And I'm using it, so I'm, I'm getting massive value for the storage so that I can actually maybe fit into that 1,100 square foot home or that 1,200 square foot home with no storage. So some things are perspective and other things are, hey, really, does the size really matter? Do I need that? Can I get it somewhere else? Can I work around? Can I get a cheaper workaround? Or not even just that, but can I live in this home? Not because it's cheaper, but because it's for sale and I like the location and I like everything else about the home and the bigger home it just isn't available. So I, I just hope that people keep those in mind that whether you're shopping for the Biltmore or Buckingham Palace or a 1,500 square foot condo or a 1,000 square foot condo, it's all about perspective. This is this week's discussion point. This is Brian Murray with the weekly Hoboken and Jersey City Real Estate Report, December 14th, 2021. I want you to look up there and pick out the number that doesn't quite look right. And if you look there and you said, hey, days on market doesn't look quite right, I would say you're absolutely correct. And here's the reason why. If you look at the number or the available number of homes in Hoboken and downtown Jersey City, you see it's relatively low. And if you've been watching my weekly show, you see that that number keeps falling down and down and smaller and smaller, with one exception. Some new construction for downtown Jersey City and Hoboken has come on. And it's not really new, it's just they finally put it on the MLS and it's there now. So those numbers would be much smaller. And if you look at the number of contracts in the last 30 days and you take the total number of homes available divided by the number of contracts, in Hoboken you have a about two months of inventory, a little less than two months of inventory, and in Jersey City of about three and a half. That is a seller's market. It's been a seller's market forever, and it's been a buyer's market too because the interest rates are still low. But the average days on market is just kind of a fake number. The median days on number, which is like half of the homes are selling, they're going to contract, that's in the 20s. So that's really the number you have to look at. The homes that are priced well are going and moving off of the market very quickly. And anything else is sitting. If you're looking at the sold price to ask price, in both Hoboken and Jersey City, there's basically not really much of a discount. 
So if you're a buyer and you're about to put an offer on a home, especially a home that just came on the market, know that it's going to be full price. It's going to be full price. It might be more than full price. It's not going to be 3% off. It's not going to be 5% off. And it's not going to be 10% off for cash you might get it for full price and cash. So these are the numbers, and those are the really important numbers there to look at are, again, the inventory, months of inventory is low. It's gonna get lower. I can tell you right now, there's two weeks left in the year. Not that many homes are coming on the market, and the buyers are still out there. Just did a couple of open houses this weekend with a lot of traffic, a lot of buyers are still out in the market. I wouldn't be surprised if you see homes go on Christmas Eve, the day after Christmas, New Year's Eve. There are gonna be buyers out there kicking the tires writing offers on those days so if you're a buyer coming into the market and think you're gonna wait until next year and all this inventory is gonna come on everything's gonna be great I think that you're gonna be in for a little bit of a rude awakening that there might not be as much inventory as you think and the buyers that are out there are number one they're educated and they're ready to go this is this week's market report for Hoboken in Jersey City this is Brian Murray with the good the bad the ugly Hoboken Jersey City mid-December version so the good, you know, at this time of the year, the street lights get the big snowflakes and some of the more stately restaurants, they have the defrosted windows and the big wreaths on the door and it just feels festive. So, you know, occasionally you find yourself out a little bit more often at this time of the year than you might normally on say a Monday or Tuesday or a Wednesday, grabbing a quick bite or a holiday party or something. So you're out and it's just, it's a little more festive and it's before it gets really cold and we hunker down for January and February and March. So that's the good. The bad. Did you notice that there's no free parking? That you go to other towns and there's like little signs that go, hey, happy holidays. Free parking through January 2nd. It's not happening here. It's like, I, I'm beside myself. Why not? Could we get a little bit of free parking? Just a little bit of free parking, a little giveaway, maybe even a little half off, a little BOGO parking. It's a buy one, get one. So maybe I buy an hour and I get an hour free, or maybe I get some uh, parking for elves only. I don't know. That's, that's tough uh, for me. And then, uh, you know, the ugly, and, and I'm gonna take a little bit of a left turn here with the ugly. We just had some terrible tornadoes in, in Kentucky and I believe Tennessee as well. And, and like just the weather has really done some terrible things to some people, good people. And it brings me back to, it's not that we don't have our own problems here sometimes with flooding and that kind of thing. But the nice thing is you can look back and things get rebuilt. For some people it's devastating and it's a permanent thing, but the resilience of the people to press on and rebuild, that's great. But the ugly part is people forget. You know, I have so many people now that are like looking to buy ground level and garden level units. It's like, cause they're, they're better, they're a better deal. And it's like, hey, you know, not for nothing, but we did, they did flood at one point and it's not as though, oh, we just raised them up 12 feet in the air. And I assume that they're gonna rebuild in Kentucky and Tennessee and all these other places as well, just like they rebuilt on the side of the mountain where there's mudslides in California. And people just continue to go and make the same mistakes over and over and over again and blame the weather. The weather is the weather. It's like, that shouldn't be a surprise. The fact that, you know, you take your risk, you take your chance, but I just wish we could figure out a way to sort of protect people a little bit better against all of that. So that was the good, the bad, the ugly. I'll leave you with a quote, positive quote from Napoleon Hill. As promised, your progress in life begins in your own mind and ends in the same place. Thank you so much for watching The Brian Murray Show. I do appreciate it. I appreciate your comments, your likes, your follows, your shares. All episodes of The Brian Murray Show can be found at themurraypropertygroup.com under the blog section. You can also find me on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Instagram, on Google My Business. All the shows are there. So if you just Google my name, Realtor Hoboken, pops up. It's awesome. If you could leave a review there, I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, if you enjoyed anything the show, find the weekly market reports at all helpful. Uh, definitely do leave me a review. And if there's anything that you disagree with, please reach out to me directly and I'll show you why you're wrong. Thanks for watching.